Remember when spring breakers in Florida wouldn't stop partying, even after the coronavirus pandemic hit the United States? What happened when spring break was over? We can actually track movement of these devices over the remaining weeks of March, seeing where these devices went after spring breakers left the beach. So what you're seeing in this video is what happens if people do not exercise social distancing, where a group of individuals, you know, or a few thousand people in this case, gathered at a beach in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and all the places they've traveled, showcasing how interconnected our world is. Josh Anton runs X-Mode, a company that tracks the movement of devices like cell phones. His team says it's used location data to track where everyone on the beach in Fort Lauderdale in March went after they left, including those spring breakers. From New York to the Midwest, even Canada. You know, the power of this location data, it can be used to understand not only, you know, how people and where people are, are, are traveling post, uh, post gathering, but also potentially to prepare and to be proactive if something happens, right? To be able to identify future hotspots of where the coronavirus could happen before it happens. But the applications of X-Mode's technology go way beyond sunburned co-eds. Anton says the company tracks 25 million devices every month in the United States and millions more around the world. X-Mode says it would be willing to work with governments and other groups to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. We work with uh, you know apps that have a real location use for use case for running location, whether it's transit apps, whether it's uh, weather apps or apps that alert you about the earthquakes happening near you, right? Um, we then integrate our location uh, technology to allow data sharing uh, where a user can opt in to uh, sharing their location data. We comply with GDPR, we com comply with CCPA, but we try to go a step beyond it, which is, um, you know, being what we call privacy conscious. The company claims it licenses that data to third parties, including advertisers, without any personal identifying information. Can your technology be used to track individuals? Can it track me? Um, it could, right? But we don't allow that. And we don't allow any of our partners to do that because we just don't think that's the right thing to do. While Anton says his company makes every effort to keep data secure and doesn't identify the owners of the devices it is tracking, there are serious privacy concerns about this kind of technology. In 2018, a New York Times investigation showed how location data could be used to identify the specific owner of a particular device. You know, I don't think a lot of people realize that even this technology exists, that it's out there. And I think some people are pretty creeped out. What would you say? Uh, to folks who have concerns when they sort of see that, that you can track devices like this. I'm gonna quote Uncle Ben from uh, Spider-Man, which is, with great power comes great responsibility, right? Um, you know, I think there's a fine line. I think it's very important that users consent to this. And it's very important that you act, act ethically with that data. Professor Roma, for you to come in here, because I know you've just gauged in financial terms and it's back of envelope, how much production damage is going on on a monthly basis and compare that to perhaps the cost of just pumping money into the medical sector to produce the number of tests we require, whether it's do I have coronavirus right now or whether or not I've got the antibodies. Talk us through the maths here, please. Yeah, um, my estimate right now is, is that we're losing about three to four hundred billion dollars each month in output we don't produce and in income that we don't earn. If we spent a hundred billion dollars in the next, you know, 12 months improving the quality of our tests, innovating, scaling out the tests we already have, we could recover much more quickly. We might avoid that, that four hundred billion dollar loss each month. And there's another cost of delay in recovery, which is that we may not be able to recover to some of the things we used to do before. The level we return to may be lower if we delay too long. So a faster recovery would be enormously valuable. To have that cheap 10 cent mask be taken away from us or not to have that readily available was really, really surprising.
Shapeways is a venture-backed uh, digital manufacturing platform that specializes specifically in 3D printing. With 3D printing, you can produce short-run manufacturing parts that are perfectly used for like the shortages that we have in the supply chain today. We've completely turned over our facility to, to support this crisis. The virus gets spread on a droplet. What the virus is trying to do is to try to go to your nose or your mouth. That's where it's paradise. And that's where the face shield comes in. But they're not, they're not like sort of rocket science. And the bottom line is anything that blocks that drop is gonna be fine. Surgical masks are tough because it requires a very, very tight fit around the face. Now on the face shield, we have seen a lot of success. So right now there's over 10 hospitals in New York currently prototyping or using face shields with Shapeways. Face shields are typically sold for one-time use between four and $6. We're selling these to the hospitals at $40 a face shield. That is a reusable model that can be cleaned, disinfected. We feel that the multi-use application is better um, because there's shortages of materials across the space. You know, I think about a face shield the same way I think about a surface. Just like you clean the surface of your counter in your kitchen, you don't have to replace the kitchen countertop every time someone coughs on it. You can easily clean it. Whenever you start to see shortages in supply chains, you know that that's a great fit for 3D printing. Thank you.